Okay, I'm really hoping this is in focus. Might be my eyes. Hey guys, uh, I was a little bit lazy this week, I'm not gonna lie. So this week's vlog is just, it's just gonna be a Q&A. But I think it's good because I have, I, I could talk to you guys about some things anyway. We could talk about uh, some updates. So I think it'll, I think it'll be good. I put on a, a thing on my Instagram story saying ask me questions for the Q&A. And also on a post which... Not a lot of people um, ask me questions on, which is kind of embarrassing. You guys really let me down. And then I'll probably delete it. But um, we're just going to go with the, <laughs> with the story one because I did get a couple questions on there. Anyway, let's get into it. A lot of them are about music, which is good because we could talk. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about music, right? Because I've been posting vlogs weekly and my second album, Girl Afraid, released in November. And I released one song since then, which is pretty typical because like I just gave you guys a lot of songs. But <laughs> but nonetheless, I've been kind of not talking about music that much lately, so let's talk about it. Question number one. When will your next song be out? Okay. A, I did just release a song on Valentine's Day, so almost a month ago, called Broke. Um, I actually wrote that song way back in... 2018, literally right next to Girl Afraid, I wrote Broke. But it didn't really fit the narrative that we started creating around Girl Afraid, so it never made it onto the album, but it was a song I loved and it was perfect for Valentine's Day, so we released it then. And if I'm being honest, I really love the demo version more than the, the version that came out. The demo version is just guitar and me. So I would love to do a version of it like that, but as far as the next song that we'll be releasing, I'll say this. Right now, I am on what I am calling an intermission. I have pretty much written my entire next album. Not produced, but written it. And I just feel like I want that next album to be everything that I've never been able to do. You know, in the past year or so, I've really started to understand more of what sound I am. Like when I first started making music, the first thing I was asked was, what sound are you? And if I'm being honest, I had a very specific sound that I like, but I didn't say that. Well, I did. I was like, hey, I like folk music. That's the sound I like. I love Mumford & Sons. I love the Lumineers. I love Gregory Allen is a Cobb. I love early Taylor Swift, and back then, you know, Folklore and Evermore didn't exist, but I love those too. I love the Head and the Heart, you know, the Yvette Brothers. I love that kind of music. I also really love, like, rock. Um, I don't know if you'd call it rock, but like, like the Arctic Monkeys and that classic, like, 2000s movie track sound, you know, like, the soundtracks of Cheaper by the Dozen or, like, John Tucker Must Die, that classic, just electric guitar sound. Those are the sounds I like. And I said that, and I was told, you know, okay, no, <laughs> because we're gonna turn you into a pop artist. And you know, it was done with all the best intentions, and like, I understand. But at the time, all I really cared about was lyrics, and that's still my priority, I will say, is lyrics. This is such a long-winded way of answering this super simple question, but it's, it's, it needs to be stated. I was like, okay, I'll do the pop, we'll, we'll mix like pop and folk, and that's what Peer became, and then... With Girl Afraid, I really got to be hands-on with my lyrics, but I wasn't really sure what I wanted to sound like because a lot of the stories I were telling weren't personal. They were stories I was creating, or they were personal, but, like, they had a vibe, you know? Like, they had a sensual vibe, or they were, like, a little evil. Um, and I love that, and I really am happy with the way both of those turned out as concept albums, but neither feels really 100% genuine to... That's like, that's, like, what I would listen to, man. I will say, Jade is, like, the song that I feel most sounds like me. So that's the sound I'm leaning into more. So... I want to be completely educated and prepared on what I want this next project to sound like. And I want it to be just really authentic, really honestly kind of simple, and just what I wanted to do from the start. And I'm so happy with the lyrics that I've written for that album, and I also have like an EP that I would love to release too that's like story based, but that's a whole other story. I'm at an intermission right now between Girl Afraid and that album, but I will say that I do have like in between courses for you guys. I didn't leave you hanging, okay? There's like a little bit that you guys can have. So a couple songs that I was gonna save now that I've rethought it, I don't think they're gonna fit in there anymore to make it the best project it can possibly be. 
um, but they also were too like positive to be on Girl Afraid. So those songs are going to be kind of like here to hold you guys over. So just to kind of leak some secrets, I'm thinking about maybe a deluxe version of Girl Afraid or a couple songs in between the waiting period. Right now, I really wanna focus more on my acting, on my writing, because I was working for four years on Girl Afraid, and a lot of those other things that I'm incredibly passionate about, I mean, I'm literally going to school for film, and like, I didn't really get to put my full foot forward in that. I wanna act more and I wanna write more. For this intermission period, I really wanna focus on those things, and also on becoming a better like music artist in general, and like understanding more of the music side of things before I release my next project and I just want everything to be pretty much incredibly simple um but yeah that's a really long way of telling you guys um I do have songs to hold you over but I'm really working on something that I feel like is gonna be really authentic so it's kind of in an intermission period right now but you guys will get snacks so don't worry next question someone asks what is your least favorite song from your favorite singer my two top artists are probably Taylor Swift and Gregory Allen Isakov, but I wouldn't really count Gregory Allen Isakov just because I'm not really sure if I'm even pronouncing his name correctly. Um, I just know like all of his songs. I don't really know much about him. I was actually just watching videos today. He's like a farmer. I actually knew that, but like it's so cool that he's a farmer. I would say my favorite singer was probably Taylor Swift. Yeah, probably. And my least favorite song from Taylor Swift is actually kind of a hard question because there are actually like a, a good amount of songs from Taylor Swift that I'm not that big of a fan of. The albums I love most are like Folklore Evermore. I kind of like lost touch with her around Red in 1989 and then Reputation kind of got me intrigued because I was like, where did Taylor go? And then um, when Lover came out, I was like, oh my gosh, she's becoming iconic. Like, I mean, she was already iconic, but now she's becoming like a real icon. I don't know how to explain what I'm saying, but like it felt like she was a tried and true legend i guess you could say at the point of lover and then when folklore came out it just like my whole world changed you know what i mean and then evermore and i was like regurgitating butterflies and stardust um so obviously my least favorite song from her is not in any of those albums it would probably be somewhere in like the 1989 red eras because i wasn't really listening to them i was kind of being like a pretentious kid <laughs> she has so many songs like she has such a huge discography like i don't I don't know what my least favorite one is, you know what I mean? I don't listen to it. Honestly, maybe me. Okay, I'm gonna go with me. Not because I don't love me, and honestly there's probably another song in Taylor's discography that I would prefer me over. But the reason I'm going with me is because it's with Brendan Urie from Panic! at the Disco, who is also just another brilliant artist who I've loved since I was a little girl. Both of them I've loved since I was a little girl. And I just feel like it was a disappointment lyrically you know i think it's a really fun song and like if it were with another artist i wouldn't really mind it but it came as like the leading track for lover and i feel like it was just a little bit of a disappointment you know because brendan yuri is also a brilliant songwriter i would have loved to see them go somewhere a little bit more edgy something like if they had done cruel summer together or something like that that would have been like a cultural freaking reset but instead they did like a fun loving song that was just en an enjoyment to listen to i would have really enjoyed something a little bit more hardcore from them teaming up together not that i don't love me i mean it, it's fun you know but i think the reason is because like i feel like we kind of missed out on what could have been with their collaboration question three someone asked what's one of your biggest inspirations to do what you love. So to do what you love, I have a couple things that I love. Music, which is what we've been talking about. I love acting, and I love writing. For music, because we're on the topic already, Taylor Swift, Gregory Allen is a cough. Oh my goodness, have you guys heard of Peter McPoland? He only has a couple songs out right now, but he's absolutely brilliant. Like His performance style is so unique. His voice is honestly probably my favorite singing voice ever. And he's just incredible. I've been listening to him like non-stop. I love Mumford and Sons, The Lumineers, The Head and the Heart, The Yvette Brothers. A lot of the people that I listen to, I don't actually know a lot about them unless they're like Taylor Swift. I love Olivia Rodrigo, Selena Gomez, like a more on mainstream artist. What's her name? <laughs> Literally, I don't remember her name. Okay, my uh, playlist called Taste. You guys should check it out. Gabrielle Applin, and she's in the UK. She has beautiful songs too. So yeah, those are like 
the artists I really love for the most part. For acting, my biggest inspirations are Audrey Hepburn, of course, just as a person too. I, I'm in love with Audrey Hepburn. I've always wanted to become an ambassador and like do more charity once I get older. So she's always been a huge role model for that. And I feel like she just, she was like a real life princess. You know what I mean? Even as like a kid fighting, dancing ballet for the resistance, even though her dad was a Nazi supporter, like. She's just an incredible woman, and I am so excited to see the movie adaptation of her life. I also love Lily James. The Cinderella adaptation in 2015 is one of my favorite movies. If you ask me what my favorite movie is, I'll probably say the 2015 Cinderella adaptation. And is that completely true? I don't know, but like it's definitely one of them. Um, and Lily James is just absolutely incredible. Everything I've seen her in, she just takes on a completely new soul and it's just so amazing to watch and right now she's doing Pam and Tommy which is the epitome of like doing a completely juxtaposing character from who she is in real life. She's just transformed like crazy into Pamela Anderson and it's so cool to see. I love Elle Fanning which is really cool because this summer, this past summer, I booked a role on The Girl from Plainville which is coming out on March 29th and don't expect much I just have one scene okay I have one scene like three lines but I do get I went in for ADR I saw the scene and like I, I got a nice shot on me and um like it's a nice it's a nice moment and it's certainly the biggest project that I've worked on biggest scale project I've worked on so the entire experience was so freaking cool. I literally went home like twirling down the hallway of the hotel room. Like it was so much fun. I It was like such a dream to be on that set and I did not get to meet Elle Fanning but um, I did get to meet Colton Ryan and Jeff Wahlberg and they are literally, I can say this with complete genuine honesty, two of the coolest people I have ever met. Like, they were so cool. It's cool that I get to share a credit with one of my favorite actresses, Elle Fanning. Um, I just think she's incredible and so talented and just honestly, I'm obsessed with her. I really love Emma Watson, again, a lot because of who she is as a person. I also love the Beauty and the Beast adaptation. Belle is obviously my favorite princess. Duh. My favorite actor, actually, who I think is just so talented is Eddie Redmayne from the Theory of Everything and Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, Danish Girl, but what really struck me was his performance in The Theory of Everything. He's just so, so talented. He once did this like monologue. He did the Mean Reds monologue on From Breakfast at Tiffany's. He did it for like a magazine as like a, like a promotion, I don't know, video or whatever. And he just did so well. Um, yeah, not surprising that he's an Oscar winner. I love Angelina Jolie. I love, um, I love Winona Ryder. I love, Helena Bonham Carter, oh my gosh. Helena is honestly one of the reasons why I am even an actress. I mean, I was already in, I was already acting, but like when I was in sixth grade or something, they played her version of Hamlet. I think it was like 1992, I don't know. Somewhere around that time period, she played Ophelia. And I remember someone in the class being like, oh my gosh, you kind of look like her. And I was like, I do. <laughs> Ever since that moment, I've been like a Helena Bonham Carter fanatic. I love how crazy and, and freaky she is, and I just think she's so cool. Um, yeah, just because someone said I look like her, so representation is real. I don't even know if she's the same ethnicity as me, probably not. Oh, Anne Hathaway too. Love Anne Hathaway. The Princess Diaries is a, will always be iconic. And then writing, I love Helena. I'm... <laughs> I love Frances Hodson Burnett, the author of The Secret Garden and A Little Princess. Well, Ridley Pearson, who wrote the Kingdom Keepers series, that's my favorite book series, so love that guy. I've met him twice, um, and he's just the coolest guy. He once posted a picture of me on his Instagram! I freaked out. He's amazing. He's such a cool guy. What other writers do I find? It's so hard to find writers that I genuinely love. Sometimes like I'll get lucky with certain works of those that I like. I honestly freaking like Shakespeare. Like I don't like Romeo and Juliet and I've said that again and again, even though I always reference it in the work I do. I love Hamlet though. I love Hamlet, I love... 
it, I really like Hamlet. But also Shakespeare's sonnets are really good. In acting class when I was in high school, we had to pick a sonnet, memorize it, and perform it as a monologue. But like we had to be completely straight faced and I remember it till this day. It was so beautifully written. And if you really just listen to the words, like you start truly getting emotional, which is something that Gregory Allen Isakov's work does. Um, but it's very rare for me to get emotional based on just words alone. And that has a lot to do with like the pacing of it. I did the get thee to an unary scene in class once as Ophelia. We just did that one scene. It was like a directing class for the thespian competition. And I remember being at rehearsal and I have never really been able to truly cry acting it's like one of my insecurities i mean you'll see me crying in my, in the work i've done but it's not like genuine it's not because i was so in the character that i was crying which is my goal like i don't want to do method i don't want to do meisner like i want to be so into the character that i i cry from it um like i don't want to open my eyes so long i start crying like i don't that's not how i want to do crying right i haven't been able to truly get where i want to be yet reading this scene i freaking got there guys just by reading Shakespeare's dialogue in this scene with a partner because it was so heartbreaking there's just something about the way it's structured that once you've processed it it's so powerful um yeah you know he's Shakespeare for a reason I love all the writers of the 1920s but select works it's always select works so and filmmakers because that's also obviously something I, I love doing i love hayao miyazaki from studio ghibli who's done the majority of who's directed the majority of those films they're so brilliant like it's literally unmatched i don't know if walt disney counts as a filmmaker you know um but yeah like obviously i'm, a, I'm the biggest walt disney fan i love like all the history of the of the company i'm, I'm so fascinated by it I really do love Tim Burton. I love Tim Burton's work. I love how it's creepy, but not actually scary. Greta Gerwig, of course. But yeah, so those are some of my favorite filmmakers. Okay. What is your greatest fear? Question number four. Um, I don't want to talk about it. Sorry. Ophelia is a character in one... Ophelia is a character on your two albums, Girl Afraid and Pure, question mark. Is Ophelia a character on Girl Afraid and Pure? So, I love how people know about Ophelia! Again, with the Ophelia, like, chill, we get it. Uh, so, Ophelia isn't necessarily Ophelia from Hamlet, but I created a character on Girl Afraid, who's essentially me, named Ophelia. There was Ophelia, Apollo, there was Prometheus. They go to this school in my album called Olympian Heritage High. Ophelia is in like this psychiatric hospital and she is looking out the window to Olympian Heritage High. Oh, and she's like a nymph. Um, right, it's like a Frankenstein's monster kind of thing. A lot of pieces glued together. She escapes the psychiatric hospital and she goes to school at Olympian Heritage. She doesn't even escape because the door is open, right? She was just afraid to leave. And she goes to school at Olympian Heritage High, and at first she hates everyone, but then she meets Apollo, and at first she hates him, but then they become really close. But then she is also this other guy she hates, Prometheus, and she hates this guy. He's everything she hates, and she kind of becomes a little evil to get back at him for all of the things he's done to girls and people and just being a terrible person in general and abusing his power. But that power and that facade kind of overtakes her, and Apollo is like, dude, what's wrong with you? And then Apollo distances himself from Ophelia, and so she freaks out and brings out the worst in her. And in the end she decides to to leave because they're they're better off you know without her and that's where girl afraid ends and that's also where the next album that i'm planning takes up but i will also say this next album is also just going to be like me but there are a couple connecting songs that like really like it's all you know there's no borders like it's all everywhere. I will say that even though when I was making Pure, I didn't have Ophelia as a present character, I did kind of lace in references to Pure in Girl Afraid. So if you look at the Girl Afraid trailer, it starts off with a hum, like creepy version of The Secret Garden, which is the introduction song to Pure. The idea is that first we're looking at this 
secret garden that's so beautiful and like the irony of it is that you're able to be your freest most pure self in the confines of these walls like you're free where you're most confined because it's other people who change who you are and girl afraid kind of flips that idea on its head and it says actually that's not a secret garden that's like a psychiatric you know enclosed space for someone who is insane and you'll see that like on the girl afraid music video that little space where there's a bunch of like children almost looking doodles of flowers and everything the idea of girl afraid is that you need that human interaction that human interaction is essential to life i have been balancing those two philosophies personally i don't necessarily disagree with either of them and i I don't know, that's kind of just, I've been thinking about it for, for a long time, apparently. <laughs> this next album will kind of talk about that and also other things. I don't want it to be forced to like continue on the story, I also want it to be about me. It's just, it's got a couple different themes going, you know, there's nothing like too definite. I don't want to force it too much upon myself because at the end of the day I know not that many people are paying attention to it. and. I just want to be able to make music that I love, you know, but yeah, there will always, there's references to it for sure. And also in like the, those appetizer songs I mentioned, we reference it as well. So because Secret Garden is referenced in the trailer, saying that that Secret Garden might actually be that psychiatric hospital, that cell. Yeah, I guess Ophelia kind of is a character on Pure, but that's not really how I initially wrote it, you know. Where do you get your inspiration to write your songs? So I talked about the artists that inspire me, but I will dive in a little bit deeper into how their lyrics inspire me. And I'll also talk about the other things that inspire me to write my songs. With Taylor Swift, I think what I admire most about her storytelling is her ability to really place you into the world. She really utilizes all senses. Let's look at All Too Well. I walk through the door with you, the air was cold. Okay, the air's cold. Like, not only does that make us feel like we're in the situation, but it tells you what season it is. You can, like, feel almost the chill. I think she does a great job at not wasting any syllables, which is something I find really important, especially when you're trying to tell the most detailed story you possibly can. She also uses a lot of implied forms of storytelling without, like, hitting it on the nose. Like, let's look at The Last Great American Dynasty, for example. That line she has where she says, The doctor told him to settle down. It must have been her fault his heart gave out. It tells us how he passed away, it tells us that he passed away. It tells us how people reacted to him passing away. It tells us what that means for a woman in that society. All without ever telling us literally any of that. She could have spelt it out for us, but she didn't. And also she utilized her syllables by saying all of that in just those few lines. I hope I explained it well. Yeah, I really love her ability to tell a story. Like Champagne Problems, Dorothea, Betty, like just telling this story that's not meant to be necessarily relatable because it's very specific. Sometimes from an entire a character's point of view, not even her own, you'll have different perspectives from different characters. You know, James, Augustine, and Betty. And she tells a story that way. And I, I think it's so brilliant. So I try to utilize those tools as well. Oh my gosh, Cruel Summer, he looks so like grinning like a devil. Like, you can see that, can't you? Like, And then Gregory Allen Isakov. There is a cough. I'm not really sure. I watched a video today and they pronounce it as a cough. So maybe I've been saying it wrong this whole time. His lyrics are on an entirely different plane of existence. I think he said himself that he doesn't even know like where they're coming from, that they just kind of come to him and it's like he figures it out later, which I completely relate to as a writer. Like that definitely happens sometimes. Then you'll kind of analyze it later and be like, oh, like there's a whole you know math to this but like i didn't even realize it the first song of gregory's that i fell in love with was the stable song i found him because like every day in high school i would just play mumford and sons radio on pandora and that's how i found a lot of the artists i listen to today gregory would play and it was usually the stable song and after listening to it probably like a million times i finally looked at the lyrics and i lost my freaking mind because they are the most beautiful lyrics ever. His lyrics are complete opposite of Taylor Swift's, meant to be very subjective. Like I said, he's not even freaking sure what he's writing when he's writing them, so everyone can interpret them differently, but for me, the stable song is a lot about a return to purity, redemption, getting like to a certain place in what you believe success is, and then returning back to your roots and understanding why you had to. And I, that really resonated with me. After that, I looked into a bunch of Gregory's other songs, and 
I just keep getting blown away by how brilliant he is. I, I literally could go on and on, write an entire thesis statement about his lyrics. There's this one line he has in uh, Dark, Dark, Dark. He goes, Howl at the Half Moon Radio Queen. She's all smoke. She's all nicotine. Like, ah! That is so good, you know? Uh, another line, um, Turn these diamonds straight back into coal. He's so good. Don't get me started on The Master and the Hound because I don't even know why, but the second that song comes, I am crying. And like, that's not a thing. I don't cry during songs. Like, I know a lot of people are like, oh, I cry during this song and all that. And I'm like, no, I don't do that. Like, I love the song, but I don't cry during the song. And I, I can bring myself to tears listening to Master and the Hound. <sighs> so yeah, other inspiration can come from books or movies. So many of my songs have been inspired by movies, like Prize was inspired by Fight Club. Criticism I had for Fight Club. And obviously Ophelia Flowers is inspired by Hamlet. Um, Coffee Eye for the video, I took a lot of inspiration from Gilmore Girls. Like obviously, I literally ended it with a film by Kirk. The song itself was just kind of, actually the song was meant to be like a parody. It originally started as a joke to be like the anti-Ocean Eyes which is kind of funny, but then it like, it was like, oh wait, this is actually like kind of a banger. Um, <laughs> so I get inspiration from a lot of other forms of art and obviously my own personal relationships. I have been with Gabe for seven years, so I usually kind of have to lie about the song being about a romantic thing. Most of the time, it's usually about a friend and I kind of like tweak it to be about that. Honestly, most of the songs on Girl Afraid were about the same person. Actually, that's not true. They were all either about like three or four people. So <laughs> yeah, personal life. And then sometimes it's just a story that I want to tell. Gosh, I'm really bad at answering questions. Uh, no, I'm not. I just really like talking. Okay. My mom asked, <laughs> what's your favorite song and how much do you love your mom? Um, I love my mom a lot. Hi, mom. I love you. Thank you for everything you do. And my favorite song is After the Storm by Mumford & Sons. It's my go-to answer. The lyrics in that song are really simple, simpler than I would normally go for, but I think it's because they're so straightforward that it really hits. No other artist really talks about those topics that they discuss in that song, so it's it just really, it like hits a lot because it's very personal to my own mind. So basically, I love the songs on the albums, Cleopatra by The Lumineers, Evermore in Folklore by Taylor Swift, This Empty Northern Hemisphere by Gregory Allen Isakov, and those are like my favorite albums. Um, oh, and Mumford & Sons. I love all their albums. Tell us one of your biggest dreams. Whoa. I have a lot of dreams. Some of them I'm like kind of scared to talk about. It's been my dream for the longest time. To see Kenyon Keepers by Ridley Pearson become a show. And my dream is to play Willa. I've been working on that for so long. There's not currently any plans of producing it, but I've been trying to like produce it, guys, so that I can audition and play Willa. <laughs> but yeah, that's been my dream for years now. I really want that in my dream for the longest time. I have so many. I just want to have a family or like a family that I've created. I've always wanted a lot of kids. I love kids, um, but no rush. But of course I have a dream to have a family. I want to get to a place in my career doing the things that I love where I can help others. So let's just put it that way. I have so many things I want to do. My mom raised me so that I don't ever feel like I have any boundaries for the type of career I want to pursue. And I don't feel like I have any boundaries for the type of career I want to pursue. Like, I want to make music and I want to act and I want to produce films, direct them the whole, write the hem, the whole nine yards. I want to write, I want to write books. I want to write whatever I can. I want to start a company. I am in the process of starting a company right now. Maybe multiple companies. <laughs> but right now I'm in the process of starting my first company. I want to be like an ambassador of a, of a high fashion brand. One of my other dreams is just like to have friends. Like a friend group, you know? I want friends where like we're families and we go on trips together and their kids are friends with my kids. Like so, yeah, that's like a very big personal dream. I have a lot of dreams and I, I plan on doing literally all of them. And lastly, my friend Gavin from a movie I filmed earlier this year called Christmas No Filter. He said, what 
do you like to cook? And I think he was kind of joking when he asked this, but I'm gonna answer it anyway. I am like an incredibly healthy eater. It's like healthy to a weird point. I basically just like take a bunch of superfoods and like mesh them together, but in eighth grade, I became a vegan for like six months and then I had a pizza on a cruise one time and I felt so great. I stopped being a vegan and I became a pescatarian and I've been a pescatarian ever since. I just eat fish. I developed a lot of taste for vegan foods and I don't really like the normal version anymore and also the vegan version is healthier so I just eat that still. Like if it's butter or milks, certain breads. So what I like to cook is like, you know what a great dinner is, man? It's like grilled salmon, little florets of broccoli, like just the top part, you make it really tiny. And then chickpeas, just chickpeas. If you're gonna get anything in your pantry, get chickpeas. And then you just put lemon juice on the broccoli and chickpeas and then you put cottage freaking cheese on the bottom of the bowl with some lemon juice. You throw the veggies on top. Salmon, okay? Some lemon juice on the salmon. Red pepper flakes, okay? Sriracha. You're ready to go, baby. You're ready to go. Yeah, no, it's actually so good and it's so incredibly healthy. I love the chickpea pasta that they have. That's probably what I'm gonna make right now, actually, with vegan sausage and cottage cheese. It's like, like, get cottage cheese. Everyone's like, oh, cottage cheese is so disgusting. Like, get over it. Get over it, honestly. Cottage cheese is so good for you, especially if you have it, like, kind of late at night. I heard it'll actually help you burn more calories in your sleep. I read that. I read it. I read it and it wasn't on Twitter, it was on a, a blog or something. So, I love berries. Oh my gosh, this is the best dessert. Okay, so after you've had your salmon, with your chickpeas and your broccoli and your lemon juice, and sriracha and red pepper, because that's all you need, and cottage cheese, this is what your dessert's gonna be, okay? You're gonna cut a green apple, Granny Smith only. Don't get a red one, that's disgusting. Granny Smith, because sour is always right, okay? And you're going to cut it. You're going to get peanut butter, get a healthy one. But peanut butter is just the ultimate thing. You can even drizzle a little bit of protein powder on it. Maybe some peanuts, some hazelnuts, some dark chocolate chips, and that's your dessert. It's so good. And it's not bad for you. I love cooking that. For Thanksgiving, I cook a cranberry sauce and mashed potatoes. So I wouldn't say I like, enjoy cooking that, but I like eating it. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I lost 24 pounds in like in like two years ago, and I've kept it off. So if you guys want tips. Let me know, I'll give you a whole list of all the meals I eat. Um, not because I'm a chef, but because they worked. And <laughs> I personally think they're yummy. Do I cook for anyone? No, because they'll usually bully me, but I think they're great. So let me know if you want them because they are literally designed to be really good for you. And I think they're tasty, so. What do I know? I've literally not had meat since eighth grade. Um. <laughs> Yeah, that's all the questions I got. There weren't that many, but I sure took my time answering them, didn't I? Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you soon. Um, I, I love you. And I also realized that other time we were like, we're gonna do au revoir, arrivederci, and I haven't been doing it like an idiot. So I'm gonna say it, and you're gonna say arrivederci like 13 going on 30. Okay, are you ready? Au revoir.